You are with Star Television on Channel 21. I am Leonora Jawara. Welcome to our local news. First, we have a look at the headlines. The use of an optional census to provide data, which might be used to change electoral boundaries shortly before an election, is not conducive to the political atmosphere or good electoral practices. According to the Visiting European Union Delegation Assessment Team on the 2018 elections recommendation, uh, no plans to observe the future ones, we will not be here for that. We are here to assess the implementation of recommendations, but we do note that three of our uh, recommendations concern the issue of our uh, results of the investigation forms, tabulation of uh, results and the publication of the Sierra Leone's Army Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Sulesi Sey, has said his desire to invest mainly in agriculture is born out of the consideration that agriculture plays a significant role, as well as it is considered to be the backbone of the nation's economy. I can invest in a small farm where myself make because some time back, His Excellency the President will make a pronouncement. We encourage you all for now we go into farming and with the CCA in CSF, in fact, they lead by example. In CSF, I see in your farm some time back. So, myself, in fact, that motivates me for let myself see, let myself go into um, rice farming. 26 judges and the principal magistrates concludes their first judicial colloquium and mock trial training on trafficking of persons. With or containing the enjoyment of human rights. To protect human rights means that the judiciary would protect individuals and groups against human rights abuse. And to fulfill human rights means that the judiciary would take positive steps or action to facilitate the enjoyment of human rights. And in sports, the Radio National Cricket Note team, known as the Petrite, will face Botswana in the ICC Men's T20 World Cup African Sub-Regional Group B qualifiers on Tuesday, 2nd November in Gahanga International Cricket Oval in Kigali, Rwanda. Now these making the headlines. Now let's get you details of the news. The visiting European Union delegation assessment team on the 2018 elections recommendation has on Friday, October 29th, held a news conference where they iterated their position, among other things, that the midterm census is unprecedented, stating that the use of an optional census to provide data which might be used to change electoral boundaries shortly before an election is not conducive to the political atmosphere or good electoral practices. This was how they related their concerns during the news conference held at the New Bluefields Hotel in Freetown. Uh, no plans to observe the future ones. We will not be here for that. We are here to assess the implementation of recommendations, but we do note that three of our uh, recommendations concern the issue of uh, results of reconciliation forms, tabulation of uh, results and the publication of the disaggregated results on the NEC website. It seems to commission that uh, future by-elections provide the opportunity for these recommendations to be implemented prior to the 2023 elections. Timely disclosure of the white paper is a precondition for an active, effective, transparent, and accountable process and for the re engaging all stakeholders. There is a clear consensus on many issues, including that there are, should be a fixed date for future elections. Now the task is to turn the discussion into law in time for the elections in 2023. The mission has been told that there is a significant decrease in trust in essential bodies. 
which play integral roles in the forthcoming lectures. These include the Ludic Free, NEC, the PPRC, and the police. Our findings are that this institution, that these institution reputations are less trusted than is needed. But further, our assessment is that there are real grounds for concern in the ways in which these bodies have administrated recent by-elections. There are surely some lessons to be learned from the management of the last by-elections, which can be derived as future by-elections. In 2018, the EU Electoral Observation Mission recommended the improvement of results and reconciliation form, the timely publication of detailed tally procedures, the publication of disaggregated results by polling stations. Those issues were not touched upon during the national validation conference in August 2021 as it focused on electoral legal reforms. Therefore, the election follow-up mission encourages the National Electoral Commission to engage with all electoral stakeholders to address those, those issues to restore confidence in the electoral management body and strengthen those the transparency and integrity of the electoral process. In our opinion, the government has a role in providing both sufficient and timely funding, but equally important and... Sierra Leone's Army Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Sulisa say, has said his desire to invest mainly in agriculture is born out of the consideration that agriculture plays a significant role as well as it is considered to be the backbone of the nation's economy. Lieutenant General Sulisi say who owns more than a 500 acre of land at Makara village in the Karina district, intimated that he is compelled by the call of His Excellency, President Julius Madabio, for all government officials to invest in agriculture. He spoke to my colleague Abdulrahman Kamara in this interview on why he chose agriculture. Well, this is my village called Makara, very close to my village, way in Amwaro, um, in the Karina district. Today, um, I can invest in a small farm where myself make, because some time back, His Excellency the President will make a pronouncement. He encourage we all follow we go into farming, and with the CC, in self, in fact, they lead by example. In self, I see in your farm some time back. So myself, in fact, that motivates me for let myself see, let myself go into um, rice farming. So today, at the harvest in Akampa, but today I didn't have this first farm where the rest don't do for harvest. This I do am for motivate me young people, em, you know, for encourage them, for let themselves go into farming. And me ready for help them, for support them. At least this, I don't see any reason why for rely on imported rice. So this, for me, I take and say in a small farm, as you said, see. for me in a small farm, in fact, I've been getting a bigger one at start, but the first farm way, I've been doing almost like 25 acres, you know, being come out well. So I decide for Kayam again as a second farm. But apart from this, I get another third one, way bigger than this one. By next year, I hope for do something bigger than this one. For me, I use a seed, and I will also use them if, uh, for me on farm, then after that I will encourage other people eh, for also let themselves use them as seed for do their own farm, not only for me. If I get enough, I will also help the people eh, for provide seed for the people eh, let themselves do their own farm. On my retirement, in fact, this is just a practice for my retirement. When I retire, I will be where I will be occupied. You know, I don't want a situation where again when I retire, then I will be bored. But if I get an activity like this on my retirement, I think I will live a better life. You see, most of the brothers, they all do free tongue, old paste and boss, they pass and free tongue as hawkers. 
So I encourage them, let them come. That kind of way they do not free tour, it's not the best for them. You know, imagine the old one piece, the old brush for the go and make, you know. They left the village where they were able to cultivate and get enough rice. So I encourage them, let them come back. This who first gets this vision from the president, he said for let we all go to uh, agriculture. So and we will be pulling our so now this one I didn't sabi. So now for that we say okay, for let we support the president's vision, for let we say for come, at least for let if not to sufficient self and see this are the first time. For let at least to people then for able to forget their young food, law left for good day, for say for the buy no more imported dress. At least with this we'll be able to help native people in Ayaso. Now for that we say this year and this year not just a start because we let for come. But by God in grace, next year we will do much better. We will be to say this rest we'll be able to provide for people in Ayaso. We will not go go free to again for go buy imported dress. So at the beg me fam bull day, we'll say ever you day, it looks like America, London, free town. When we we can into farming, as then they say money then a bush. Now for that this world don't make us so. Next year, we're not going to buy rest again for begin farm. And we're going to eat this rest, and this rest self is healthy for we. So, I invite everybody, let me all support the present vision for let we come into farming. At least this will be able to improve we. And this not only for it, we will able to do this, we sell, we do other things there with them. Okay, so we can today for harvest farm number two. Who this will brother make. The harvest is fine. Because if you look at this chivoa hole presently, uh, you they find out say it contains a lot of rice. And if you plant one grain seed rice, it gives you 10 or 20 self. I believe say na a very good harvest. This na a short of advice now me they give not only to the people of Safroko but to the people of Sierra Leone as a whole. Because if this man don't can put more than 40 bushels of rice farm, if we get that kind of people there now, na Salonia, 10 or 20, believe you me, we will be able to work on what the president they try for talk on this food security issue. Sierra Leone's Chief Justice Desmond Babatunde Edwards has said that the first judicial colloquium and mock trial training on trafficking of persons is aimed at providing professional development for judges and the magistrates in adjudicating cases of human trafficking. The four-day training was sponsored by the United States government under the T and T A grant with support from the Italian government and jointly planned and organized by the UNODC and the judiciary through the Judicial and Legal Training Institute. Abrogaman Kamara reports. The four-day training was sponsored by the United States government T and T A grant with support from the Italian government and jointly planned and organized by UNODC and the judiciary through the Judicial and Legal Training Institute. The training was aimed at providing professional development for judges and magistrates in adjudicating cases of human trafficking. Speaking at the closing ceremony, the Honorable Chief Justice, His Lordship Justice Babatunde Edwards, said the level of participation between the judges and the facilitators showcased the great potential embedded in Sierra Leoneans. He thanked the American Ambassador to Sierra Leone, David Rima, UNDP, UNOD, JTLI, Hope International, and ION for their support in making the training an excellent one. With or continuing the enjoyment of human rights. To protect human rights means that the judiciary would protect individuals and groups against human rights abuse. And to fulfill human rights means that the judiciary would take positive steps or action to facilitate the enjoyment of human rights. Against the foregoing, this judicial colloquium and mock trial training for judges and magistrates on anti-human trafficking laws is most welcome and cannot be more apt, appropriate and timely. We yearn and covet to reach tier one at the shortest possible time and will be ready to partner with all stakeholders to attain onto that level. Finally, that I must thank those judges um, that have contributed to us attaining, attaining that level which we have attained. Alini Pedra, Crime Prevention and Criminal Justice Officer Office of UNODC, 
who doubles as one of the facilitators of the training, described the training as one of the best they have had and a session of mutual benefit for both the facilitators and the participants. She thanked the Honorable Chief Justice for his warm reception in creating the enabling environment to make the training a success. And I think I would like to share that this uh, training, uh, this uh, judicial colloquy and mock trial training was more about sharing and, and receiving from you, uh, the judiciary of Sierra Leone, and gaining knowledge from you than giving knowledge to you. So we would I would like to say that we are very happy to participate. It was an excellent experience. We had very nice, uh, fruitful uh, four days of discussion and sharing, and also sharing good energy, good, good vibration. So that's what I would like to, to say. Delivering a vote of thanks, the Director of Judicial and Legal Training Institute, Honorable Justice Eku Robert, thanked the organizers, the facilitators, the participant and representative from the Ministry of Social Welfare for what he described as a display of excellence throughout the training. He added that members of the institutes have learned a lot from the display of expertise, which he said was worthy of emulation. The, uh, I'll just mention a couple of takeaways from what uh, the two speakers have said and which have uh, beginning to set the tone for our training. So uh, we're reminded of, uh, 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 first of all, the recognition of what the judiciary has done so far. So not only from the UNDP resident representative, but from the ambassador too. They record and recognize the work we have done, A, in trainings before now, but also B, in the dedication of special judges who, will be, who are handling uh, anti-human trafficking cases. And uh, today's uh, program, or the next few days' program, uh, is also another testament to our own, uh, what, what we're doing in that regard. The only, the additional thing I want to mention is that he mentioned equality and compassion in our work. So, in other words, we would also be reminded, and it's, we're grateful for that, that um, we look at it not only from the victim side, but from even the accused that we're dealing with. Abdul Rahman Kumar reporting. Orange Mobile Company has held a one-day engagement with media practitioners geared towards updating the media about key highlights of their journey in 2021. Alfie Bari has more and in our report. In hard guess, Head of Corporate Affairs and Publicity at Orange Sierra Leone, Annie Wonikata, said that Orange is a passionate corporate social investor and they believe in investing in social economic development of the country. Adding that, they want to support government's initiative to ensure the country move to another level of which she added that the company has been engaging on activities that have contributed tremendously towards the development of the country. Initiatives to ensure the country move from this level to another. So we've been engaging in activities, we've been engaging in actions to bring to life that's our commitment. So first is in April, we supported the Muslim people. Of course, you will all agree with me that we have over 60, 70 percent of our population as Muslim. So it is what's important that during the Ramadan, we support those who cannot afford, those who cannot afford iftar to ensure they are able to fast. So normally in the month of April, we make donations to a lot of mosques across the country. So this year was no different. We move across the country and we share dry ration and food items to a lot of mosques within Sierra Leone. So we moved in May, we went to Kenema because we do not want you to say that all of our CSI actions and activities are centralized. So we started decentralizing them. So we went to Kenema, we supported the Kenema Polytechnic. Annie Wonikata maintained that, as a company, they have made the commitment to reduce carbon to zero by 2040 in the country and that they have been very deliberate in pushing environmental initiatives in the country. Following that, internally, they already set up an environmental health and safety commitment that will solely be responsible for looking after the environment and safety issues. All of you know we're very passionate about education, and education is a flagship in, in projects for the government, so we're very, very passionate about pushing education. And then from there, we move to women in journalism. We can count how many women as against the men we have there to do when we're talking about professional things. 
So we're very passionate about gender equality. So when we see issues that will empower women, we're always very quick to grab the opportunity to support. So in May, we supported the women in, women in journalism to undertake what they call their workshop and, the, and their symposium. So that will bring more women on board when we, when we talk about journalism professionally. So in June, we supported the police force. We are also very passionate about security. We will not survive if there is a security base. So again, when there are issues of security, we are always very willing to support. And we all know that we talk to the police, they are a bit analog. But we've been supporting them to move as we are moving towards the digital age. We've been supporting them. So they have what they call the call center. We support them with the year internet service for, for, for this year. So we move to the environment in July. So Orange is very passionate about the environment. We're very much aware that some of the activities that we engage in, they are threats to the environment. So that is why, as a company, as a group, we made a commitment to reduce carbon to zero by 2040. And Sierra Leone is no exception. So in Sierra Leone, we have been very deliberate in, in pushing in environment initiatives. So that was why internally we established what we call the, the communication officer, Orange Foundation Sierra Leone, Alimami Paulo Bangura, revealed that the foundation was established to extend humanitarian gestures to the populace, which he said they have been doing since its inception. He disclosed that the foundation in April 2021 donated assorted food items worth 89 million leons to the Sierra Leone Autistic Society for onward support to children living with autism. And ensuring that we do charitable, meaningful causes to ensure that the best outcomes come from these interventions. So, although we were established in January, we've been very busy, and that's why it's so important for these media updates so that you know there is a side of orange that is reaching out and helping people just from a, a good place through meaningful intervention. So that's why this media intervention is so important. And I'd like to say thank you to the entire uh, CSR and PR team for this. So when the COVID, COVID um, epidemic was really tight, we intervened to donate to vulnerable people and disabled groups who were unable to do the most for themselves. That is why we um, targeted the Autistic Society. Auti uh, autism is obviously very rapid in Sierra Leone and we have the Autistic Society and we met them and we donated cooking oil, rice, sugar, onions, tomato paste and medicated soap to the students of the Autistic Society to ensure that they knew that they were still remembered even though there were lockdowns and COVID was rampant. Let them know that they were not forgotten because Orange Foundation cares. We targeted the disability rights movement in a very colorful program at... Um, Assistant Manager Marketing Partnership Department at Orange Money, Sadia Kanu, said that currently Orange Money has at least 1.3 million active base customers and they have made great successes in terms of service delivery. She stated that Orange Money has partnered with banks in country in making possible accessibility to the wallets to the bank and bank to wallet platform of sending and receiving money with a view to ease workload on the bank to give easy access to the banking system countrywide. She pointed out that Orange Money scaling continues to break new grounds in digital financial inclusion of which they have launched overseas money in partnership with Western Union and BNB. Diasporas can now send money directly to the mobile phone wallets of their friends and relatives in Sierra Leone by Western Union, BNB and other money transfer operatives. A question and answer session climaxed the occasion for Star TV News in Freetown, compiled by Hilti John, read in the studios by Alfie Barry. If you're just joining us, this is the local news here on Star Television, Channel 21. Now, the Constituency Executive of the All People's Congress Party, Constituency 132, in collaboration with Mahmoud Kamara, commonly known as Mr. Nice Guy, has donated assorted school learning materials for over 500 school-going pupils at the Lomley community. The gesture is geared towards alleviating the constraint of parents and also to motivate the pupils to do more. George Elliott Sam takes up the story. 
The constituency executive of the All People's Congress of Constituency 132, in collaboration with Mahmoud Kamara, commonly known as Mr. Nice Guy, has on Saturday, 30th October 2021, donated assorted school learning materials for over 500 school going pupils of the Lombly community. The gesture is geared towards elevating the constraints of parents and also to motivate the pupils to do more. Speaking to the press, Mahmoud Kamara, commonly known as Mr. Nice Guy, stated that the event is an initiative that was born from their constituency chairman, Ibrahim Talibo Kamara, for them to assist the needy in their various community. He went on to state that helping the less privileged is something that always melts his heart and education is important to him. Though he is not part of the constituency executive, but he is always willing to give and help behind to them. He also admonished the parent to take advantage of the scheme and also handled the items with care. Actually, me not to part of the constituency executive, but basically, I'm very closer to the executive. Come in at any time when the constituency need me for come in. So basically, the constituency they get for comes in, they need to do this donation this year. And looking at the challenge when the constituency they go through, so I get for step in, so I be able to support the constituency with five million euros for ensure say the ceremony go on. This ceremony is very important because it give hope to the less privileged. It will give a huge hope. Because we know the constraints where some of them face. Some they go to school, not get decent bag, decent shoe, and all that. So, with this package, it will actually help for transform and make them easy for the parents. Today. Definitely, this is like a project where the constituency chairman, they don't look forward to for look, put a, make them at a bigger scale. More than the almost 300 where they give today, they get a plan for ensure they make up big. And when that plan come up, when they present that to me again, definitely, we go ready for come in and support the constituency. It's so wonderful, you know. Like I say, most of the parents they're the first challenge on how to meet some of these things. Some of the people that they go to school with one bag over and again, year in, year out. But with these new things, the more the constituency they can give them, it will make life very easy for them. Constituency 132 Chairman Ibrahim Talibo Kamara said he is very delighted to make the donation together with his constituency executive as this will help to alleviate the constraints of parents and also to motivate the children to be serious with their education. We as constituency executive in collaboration with all of the aspirants that we get to this constituency decide to do a scheme where we see scholarships for them to give so that we can help them in planning. Because we believe, say, we party where we did when the All People's Congress believe in education. Uh, this is now the second phase of it. The first one we've been doing over 150. Now, this way we did do now is over 200 where we did do today. So now the second phase is. Mary Bangura. One of the beneficiaries and also parent thank Mahmoud Kamara and the constituency executive for providing what she described as a laudable gesture for their children and further that the materials provided will give more courage to their children to go to school. We the Comrade and Gladi Forum because this event where they take na big money and they put with the Comrade and Bokku Yakba. Now the bag where they can give with Piki them, any issue and bag, the value of 100,000 euros. So me and single parents are not going to get money for go buy bag now for me Piki. So Chairman Sagibo, this event where they do, let God bless them for we, let God continue for the ad forum. Now big thing they do, now they don't feed with Piki them all, see they don't get. The guest of honor, Dr. Samura Kamara, the former presidential aspirant of the All People's Congress, APC, said education is key for children and the donation is a laudable one for the parents and that of their children. He also thanked the constituency executive for thinking about the children and also pledged his commitment towards the event. It's a very, very important. We get a big responsibility. Because now that way I would have been the country for. We the big one. Go for left side, you know the hand. So now the time that we to give a take responsibility. We're waiting in the morning, you don't do anything else for do, you don't go worse. 
fine, you so. You don't wear the before, you don't wear the suit. You don't work out, but let you know late. If it's 8 o'clock, if you time for the day, let us turn to 8, 5 minutes to 8. That's so. Because you go miss class. If you miss class, you're not responsible for miss class. Now you, not so. So do you have a baby now? Are they promise? And they promise to give me energy and the effort to challenge the room. Statement we are made by various individuals who grace the occasion and also distribution of materials we are made to the children. For Star News in Freetown, George Elliott Sam reporting. Sierra Leone Chamber for Agric Business Development has held a private sector meeting with the Minister of Agriculture, Dr. Abubakar Karim. The meeting was aimed at promoting economic diversification, food security, and improved livelihood in the agricultural sector in the country. Here's the details. The minister and his team are putting in the best of effort so that the nation would eventually be food sufficient and uh, we have to generate to a point that uh, would eventually earn money from agriculture. Put it in a layman's uh, where we have to feed ourselves, generate money to take care of ourselves. We as an institution, SLICAT, as the name implies, we've been in existence for over 15 years now. And we have been struggling, government in, government out, for all of us to understand that there is a missing link in all of this. The best of production you can do in the country, if you do not involve the private sector to do the additions, to have it marketed locally and internationally, the euphoria or the attractiveness that you want to give to agriculture would not be easily realized. But with the private sector involvement and with the private sector financing, you will get people who would and who are willing to do agriculture as a business. Normally, we have the belief in Swelin in particular that farming, agriculture in particular, is for poor people. That misconception has driven the country, instead of we moving in a positive direction, we were being looked as a sector that's meant for people that do not have other alternatives. A very much, I mean, economic impact country. Because the only way we can get this country up and running and get things working is through your sector. This, uh, this ministry is very, very important to this country. And this has been alluded by the president since his uh, accession to power. And he has also encouraged his ministers and every other person to be able to get into agriculture so that we can be able to feed ourselves, reduce the importation, create jobs, have our own industry, and if possible, in a medium or long term export. This is the reason why we are here, Honorable Minister. No man can exist in, 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 in isolation. And if you exist in isolation, you cannot be productive. If you want to go far and become, I mean, better people in society, let's go together. So as the chairman, Sadiq Silva has already mentioned, we are not here to cry you down or to bring the ministry down or whatsoever. But we are here for us to be able to consult with you work with you and work with this government to better the lives of these people of Sierra Leone. We want to grow the economy. So we need each other. That's the whole essence for which we are here. How can we move forward? How can we get from this state to another level that we can make Sierra Leone a meaningful country? That can but what we really need 
to do is how we can ensure some of the challenges that have been highlighted, we mitigate them, you know, to ensure that we may, we attain food security, which is what we're craving for. We all know, obviously, that um, as part of His Excellence in Human Capital Development Program, agriculture is a big pillar there. And um, with agriculture, definitely with food security, we'll be able to impact positively on the lives of our people. But before I continue, I want to obviously take the opportunity to thank um, Snickard and the executive for um, this sort of dialogue, because this is more like a dialogue session, really wanting to have a one-on-one -on -one with the minister and the ministry at large. Um, like um, the executive secretary had actually said, you are no different, we are part of this ministry. You know, and I think um, going forward, we should continue to work in tandem to ensure that we promote all your activities. We as a ministry of myself as a policy uh, maker, we're here to make sure that we provide the environment for the private sector to thrive. We all know quite recently, as part of the policy shift, and this was done deliberately with His Excellency's vision, that if we had to actually succeed in agriculture, um, we should bring in the private sector. And finally, to round up a news bulletin, let's see what's happening in the sporting world. Now, the Sierra Leone National Cricket Note team, known as the Petroit, will face Botswana in the ICC Men's T20 World Cup African Regional Sub Regional Group B qualifiers on Tuesday, 2nd November, in Gahanga International Cricket Oval in Kigali, Rwanda. Hilton John, sports correspondent, has more. Hello, everyone. Welcome for today's sporting news. Let's say Alan Pettit, that is the male cricket team, will face their opponent in the ongoing qualifiers of the high CC T20 regional competition in Rwanda. Sayalun will face the side called Boswana on Tuesday. According to their coach of the team, who is Mustafa Kalon, they are well determined to see how they'll pick their first victory in the qualifiers. Despite the challenges faced before the team departed the country for the competition proper. Here is the report by Isabella Stanley. Men's Patriot ended the workshop on Sunday at the IPLC Cricket Grounds to set for their match against Botswana on Tuesday. In the opening of the ICC Men's T201 World Cup African Sub Regional Group B qualifiers to be hosted at the Ganga International Cricket Stadium in Kigali, Rwanda. We're doing very, very high spirit, and my boys are there with the same spirit, and we're ready for flu at this competition. And although Botswana and Tiwana are not going to be it, yes, they can give you a difficult time. But presently, now, the 19 have been beat them. But now, I don't care now, the senior team, we're not head coach, you know, with me tactics, I believe so, we'll come victorious. Yeah, well, we don't talk to our boys, then we don't train about two days now. Moreover, we we'll do batting at the net, then we'll get. Give them some city bikes, talk the way we make them bike, but very, very well. Well, then the tough than Nigeria, this guy far more better. When the tough to strong, so the ball will play very fast. Yeah, like a concrete ball. So we prepare for kind of spring surprise at the gallery. Sierra Leone has met Botswana more than five times in the competitive qualifiers, notable amongst the drives. We are the one in 2011-2012 and in 2017. The country has never had an edge over Botswana. In 2011, during the ICC World Cricket League Division II tournament, in Benoni, South Africa, Botswana bowled Sierra Leone all out for 36 rounds with away swings. They were looking forward to having a repeat in 2012, but the locals put up a strong fight and only had to be bowled out for 100 rounds. Gubi entails Sierra Leone, Botswana, Cameroon, Mozambique and Tanzania who has once described the Patriots as sleepy giants playing in a dusty oval. 
of five nations, Sierra Leone was the first to arrive in Kigali, followed by Mozambique and Botswana, Tanzania arrived on Sunday, whilst Cameroon is expected on Monday. Ten matches will be entertained with the opener settings, the stage between Botswana and Sierra Leone in the morning hours of Tuesday, 2nd November 2021. The second match will see Mozambique taking on Tanzania in the afternoon. On Wednesday, November 3rd, Sierra Leone will enter the Gangag International Cricket Stadium for its second match against arch-rival Tanzania. In all, the country will play four matches and end its qualifier spells against Cameroon on the 7th of November. If it trophies, it will wait for a week to join the finalist in the All-African Final. The winner from Group B will triumph in all four matches in order to compete in the All-African Final, where Kenya, Nigeria and Uganda are already waiting. Nigeria, together with fellow finalists, will arrive in Kigali on November 6, 2021. For Star TV Sports in Freetown, I am Isabella Stanley. Thanks to Isabella for that report. Wish the team all the best in this year's qualifier in Wanda. Away from cricket, in football, the Dr. Andes Vaikoma Inter-District Football Competition has begun in the Northern Region. With Mampa Stars, former defending champion, was in attendance in the opening ceremony. The competition is sponsored by Honorable Chairman Majuba, who is the leader of the majority in Parliament for the APC. More details will be coming up in our next news bulletin. In the ongoing Sierra Premier League, the side Colmont Oreo Sleeper succeeded in its own victory against Wuzum Stars. It was a nightmare for Wuzum Stars, one of the league leaders in the ongoing Sierra Premier League. And in the southern region of Bo, we saw Bo Rangers register one victory against Sierra Police. At the Sierra Stadium, Stadium Freetown City Football Club Neil, FC Carlo Neil. It was a brilliant performance demonstrated by the Freetown City Football Club. The Premier League will continue on Wednesday. More details also, but the upcoming matches will be coming up in our next news bulletin. Finally, in boxing, the Sierra Leone boxers in Serbia are not doing well in the ongoing competition. Three fights, no win. The last one was disastrous. Let's pray for the upcoming remaining boxers that will be contesting in the upcoming fights. But as it is at the moment, no good performance on the CLM boxers. They keep on receiving a lot of punch in the competition. So that's all for sports for today's news. Back to Eliana Jawa in the studio. Well, those are the stories we have for you today in the Star Local News file. I am Leonora Jawara. Please stay with us for more interesting programs.